Welcome uh, to Parev TV. On uh, Tuesday, March the 6th, the Center for Peace and Justice and Reconciliation at Bergen Community College hosted a presentation by Dr. Helen Evans, the Mary and Michael Jaharis Curator of Byzantine Art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art about her upcoming exhibition, Armenia at the Met, Making Medieval Armenian Art and culture relevant. This video captures highlights of the evening, which opened up by welcome remarks by Never Beilerian, co-director of the Center for Peace and Justice and Reconciliation at Bergen Community College. Welcome to the campus, the Paramus campus of Bergen Community College. Uh, with us tonight um, is the Vice President of Academic Affairs of Bergen Community College, Dr. William Mullaney, and we're very honored that he's here. It's exciting to have you tonight. How would you like to say to us? Thank you, Nevaeh. Um, I want to welcome you all to Bergen Community College on behalf of our college president, Dr. Michael D. Redmond, and the Board of Trustees. Um, a special shout out to the Center for Peace, Justice, and Reconciliation, which sponsors this event. Um, a lot of the faculty who are um, really the heart and soul of that center are here tonight and um, are responsible for bringing uh, an event of this caliber to the college. I can't be more proud when we have events like this and speakers like Dr. Evans. So welcome to everyone, and we're so glad to have you. Thank you. Particularly, we're honored to have with us today um, one of our steadfast underwriters. I just would like, she's usually very low key, um, but I just need to give a shout out to Seta Nazarian. Seta, will you just give a little wave? Thank you for your vision, your vision and your support. <laughs> it is with great anticipation and honor I welcome Dr. Helen Evans. very, very proud um, to be doing this exhibition. I think it's incredibly important for people, both Armenians and non-Armenians, <clears throat> to understand the significance of the role of Armenia and other East Christian cultures in world history. And that we tend to minimize, not because we set out to do it, but because the, the countries that are dominant have shifted as Columbus changed the way we get around the world. So in the Middle Ages, you could not get to the silks or the spices without having trade routes, many of which went through Armenia. And we will open the show with an English map of the mid-1200s in which on the description of Noah's Ark and Armenia written under it, <coughs> the um, uh, English monk Sir Matthew Paris wrote, that they controlled all of China and India. It's a little bit much, but, <laughs> but it probably does say where Europe thought you went to get to the trade goods that came through Armenia. Um, I, we are hoping with this exhibition to make people understand how important your culture is, the religion that Pope Francis has recognized as the first Christian nation, and how you use that over the centuries to build a trade route that ultimately by the end of the exhibition truly reaches from China to London and Latin America. You are in Latin America and as I'm sure you all know you're in America in 1619. The United Nations was being completely redone and the ambassador to the United Nations from Armenia asked me if we would take care of the Hotchkar. So on the right, you see it as we built a special place for it at the Met. And on the left, you see it as it is now and was before at the United Nations. It looked much better at the Met. But it was, <laughs> and, and the ambassador says so. But it is far more important as a representation of your independence. Alicia, we are borrowing from the major um, repositories of your culture. I think people fail to recognize how very much you have preserved your culture. So we're borrowing from the Matanadra and the History Museum and Holy Etchmizin from the Brotherhood of St. James in Jerusalem, the Great House of Cilicia, and the Mechiris at um, San Lazaro in Venice. Um, 
and that will be, we have about 150 works in the show, and that will be a little over 100 of the works in the show. And then we will be borrowing from the Armenian Museum in Boston, from the Gulbenkian, from the Manukian, um, some more Armenian works, and we are borrowing a few works um, from other institutions, some of those being works to compare to Armenian works. Um, when we did the exhibition in 1994, we had no money, so we could only borrow from collections in America because it's cheaper. Um, so this exhibition, which hopefully we will soon have all the money we need if we're just a little short of that for the moment, we'll be able to bring works from abroad and someone asked earlier, we'll be able to have manuscripts and textiles and stone sculpture and beautiful reliquaries so that maps, um, so that people can see that Armenians did everything. Um, manuscripts are incredibly important to Armenian culture, but it, as someone said earlier, that is what you can carry with you. So they've survived um, when you maybe had to sell your jewelry um, or the reliquary got melted down and maybe the relic survived. Um, so we are trying to restore kind of the totality of Armenian culture. Um, my name is Sidan and I go to online school. What's your favorite part about your job? I um, love going into the Metropolitan Museum every day. <laughs> um, I love being able to install in the museum in the area that I'm responsible for um, the art of cultures that 20 years ago were not as well represented in the galleries for what the people who made them saw them as. A lot of the, uh, the Byzantine art we have on display was always on display. We acquired it from J. Pierpont Morgan so for most of a century, but it was on display as origins of Western art. And now it's on display as cultures of the East Christian world, which influenced Western European art. You know, I think you really might be Armenian. <laughs> I would be very, I would be very, very proud to be Armenian. I'm pretty sure.